851, turn right, heading 180. 014, Papa, turn right 245, report localizer established 27. What is the future of Boeing? Hello everyone and welcome to DJ's Aviation. Not only is this question difficult to answer, but it's also very intriguing. I've never explored the future of a specific manufacturer really, rather I've just focused in on airlines' futures. I've had a few requests now to do Boeing, Airbus and so on, so I thought I'd begin with Boeing, and their future is certainly an exciting one with lots of potential aircraft releases. In this video, I'll be talking about the Boeing 747-8, the 777-X, the 797, the Embraer merger, and a whole lot more. We'll begin the discussions with the Boeing 747-8, the latest version of the Boeing 747 series. The aircraft has, I'd say, underperformed in the passenger aspect, however, it is certainly thriving as best as it can under the freighter market. The aircraft recently pulled in orders at the 2018 Farnborough Air Show and also received a boost from UPS earlier in 2018. The 747-8, I believe, will play a big part in the future of Boeing, especially in the freight industry. We have seen in recent years the aviation trends dramatically shift. For instance, 20 years ago, the demand for a 787 or even an A350 wasn't there. However, now we're seeing carriers prefer these twin-engine aircraft that can do similar things to your quad jets. This is where Boeing adapted and launched their 7478F. You see, the cargo market is constantly growing. It is an industry and market that is thriving. Cargo carriers like UPS are flexing their muscles and really showing off their latest purchases as in the cargo sector, larger aircraft thrive. And one could say it's the complete opposite in terms of the passenger scenario. The Boeing 7478F has steadily been receiving new orders, and while it only sits on 80, the possibilities over the coming years are certainly endless. And when comparing 80 passenger orders to 80 cargo orders, there is a little bit of a difference. For instance, we're never going to be seeing 900 7478F sold, but 150, 200 is a very good total. While on the topic of the freighter aircraft, the 7478 and so on, it's also important to note that Boeing dominate the cargo sector and the market in general. They have far more cargo aircraft on offer than any other manufacturer, and the key point about this is it's all in different sizes. They offer things like the converted 737 freighter, they have the 767F on offer, the 777F, the 7478F, and this just makes them the go-to manufacturer for cargo aircraft. However, what's coming in the future? As you may have been aware, there's been talk of a potential NMA cargo variant, which would be able to do similar things as the passenger version. For instance, it would transport cargo to locations which currently aren't and currently cannot be connected. Another alternative option is launching the Boeing 777X freighter. We'll discuss the 777X more in depth later, but this freighter version could easily succeed the current 777 freighter. But is it needed? This is certainly another question, because currently the standard 777F is on offer, and the 7478 is also on offer. Both of these aircraft are moving along quite nicely, with both of them receiving orders at the 2018 Farnborough Air Show. And even before that, for instance, the 777F is still receiving orders, and therefore it means it'll be operating for decades to come with some cargo airlines. I believe that will conclude the future of the freight industry. Let's move on to the NMA. You've heard me talk a lot about this, and this is the aircraft which is dubbed to be the 797, and could, and should, play an integral role in Boeing's future as a plane maker. While the business case is currently being analysed, if this aircraft is released in the future, it will definitely be changing the industry trends further, just like the A321neo series. The Boeing 797 is an aircraft which will seat anywhere between 220 to 270 passengers, in likely two variants. These have been dubbed the 7976X and the 7977X. Inside sources mention this to news outlets and that's where we're getting it from. Now, if this particular aircraft is released, it will likely be the most popular aircraft within Boeing if all goes according to plan. It probably won't beat the 737 series on paper, but its rapid growth will certainly have a compete with the 737 MAX series in terms of deliveries. It is expected if released, Boeing may sail upwards of 4,000 units, which is certainly a success. But why is this aircraft the future for Boeing? 
The 797 is the future because it offers carriers something different. It gives them the ability to purchase, hopefully, an affordable aircraft which can operate on non-established routes. That is one of the sole purposes of this 797. It will connect secondary hubs which nowadays cannot be connected because of range limitations and a whole lot more. The 777X is another up-and-coming aircraft for Boeing and will also be a key part of the future for them. The aircraft is set to release in the coming years and is essentially the updated 777 with enhanced features. The aircraft will operate with a host of big airlines like Singapore Airlines, Emirates and more. It's also estimated to be receiving orders from other carriers soon like Saudi Arabian Airlines and Qantas. The two of them are currently eyeing the aircraft for their own operations. Qantas, it's in regards to Project Sunrise, and we don't know why the interest is coming from Saudi Arabian, but I should mention they do currently operate the standard 777, so they may be looking at it as a replacement, or for fleet growth, or just operational opportunities. The 777X will be the leading aircraft for Boeing's wide-body fleet, with it likely taking over the 7478 passenger version, which as I mentioned earlier, is now being strictly focused on the freighter market, where it is obviously thriving, and Air Force One, which I did forget to mention earlier, as the United States of America will be receiving two new 7478s, which will be of course heavily enhanced, and that's a big job for Boeing. While the 777X will be the replacement to the 777, it will also feature folding wingtips, a feature which we could look to expect on other Boeing aircraft in the future if this performs to Boeing's liking. The move to folding wingtips is a first for Boeing in the commercial scene, and will not only give Boeing an idea if the decision was worth it, but it will also give other plane makers like Airbus the knowledge if it was a good idea. If the 777X folding wingtips really kick off and they do well, we might start seeing other aircraft, like maybe the 797, implement this design, or there might be conversions on the 737 Maxes from folding wingtips or the 787s might get it as well. It all depends on the wingspan, which is another point I really want to discuss. The increased wingspan of the 777X was the reason why folding wingtips were introduced on the aircraft. It simply would not fit into gates, and if Boeing planned to release other new aircraft in the future with quite a large wingspan, they will need to have this folding wingtip device. That's pretty much why I'm saying it is the future, because there are many benefits to having a wider wingspan. Let's now talk about Embraer and Boeing and their merger. This merger between the two would mean they would share operations. The company would be controlled by Boeing and have a key focus on commercial aviation. So that's your 737s, 787s and so on. What does this mean for the future of Boeing? Well, similar to Airbus and the C-Series, it allows Boeing to dip into a market currently not filled by a singular Boeing aircraft. However, it is now going to be filled by the Embraer aircraft. This means that Boeing can offer the Embraer aircraft as their own, and in turn increase their profits as well as give Embraer a new lease of life. The merger also means Boeing won't have to worry about pouring hundreds of millions into the development of an aircraft to rival these Embraer aircraft and the A220 series. As we know, back in the day, Boeing did have aircraft that was similar to the C-Series as it was previously known, and the E-190s but they haven't really produced one of late in their new kind of fleet that they would be able to offer. So this is where the Embraer aircraft could be really beneficial to them, especially in the regional sector. Let's now talk about hypersonic travel. This was a concept released by Boeing in recent months, and is completely different to what I have been discussing. This Boeing hypersonic jet is still decades off, and we may never actually see it, but it is an exciting prospect for the future of Boeing. The hypersonic plane will fly at Mach 5, or just under 3,900 miles per hour, which of course is light years ahead of any other aircraft which is currently on the market. The aircraft from concepts which were released officially by Boeing wouldn't be suited to large capacities, and likely would be similar to the Boom Supersonic aircraft, which is set for release very soon if all goes according to plan. The aircraft would likely fly from the US to Japan in 3 hours and New York to London in just 2 hours, and this is what they will heavily advertise it on. It's certainly an interesting time for Boeing with the official unveiling of their hypersonic jet. 
The future is certainly bright, as I said, for Boeing, with lots of opportunities that I probably didn't even get to discuss in this video also occurring in the future. As for the future aircraft, we only really know of the NMA, but certainly don't rule out new creations in decades to come to help cope with the heavy demand set on the aviation industry. What are you excited for in terms of the future of Boeing? Is it an aircraft? Is it the folding wingtips? Or is it something else? Feel free to let me know in the comment section below, as I'd love to hear what you're excited for. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like, and of course subscribe to the channel if you're new. We are now really, really close to 100,000 subscribers, and your subscription now would mean more than ever to me. I'd like to thank you very much for watching, and I do look forward to you all joining me in the next one. Race all of these broken dreams and flight, and we'll fly.